everybody. Uh, my name is Renato. I'm a backend developer, and I've been working on Magento for a few years now. Uh, of course, I started with Magento 1, but for the last year, more or less, I've been mostly on the Magento 2 community and enterprise editions. Today, I'm going to talk to you about AMQP, uh, but most of what I'm going to say will apply also to message queue in general. Uh, why is that worth mentioning? Because AMQP is just a protocol that follows a wider paradigm that is message queue. Um, the main implementation of RabbitMQ, what is probably the most used uh, of AMQP, sorry, is RabbitMQ. And uh, it's not available in the same way as we are used to uh, have our services nowadays, like as a service. So if we stick to the wider paradigm, so message queue, we could also include to the tools we, we want to use, we can use Amazon SQS, which we don't need to care about uh, hosting on a server or like scaling, caring about uptime and so on. So about this AMQP and message queue in general, we could jump straight to the code, but first, it's worth understanding when we can use it and when it can help, and also how it works. So, as a general rule, you can use a message queue and it can be useful when you need to process uh, a task in an asynchronous way compared to the, like, to the page load. So, when you need to process something that doesn't need to be in the page itself. So what I'm trying to say is that if your home page or your category page is slow to load, a message queue won't help, most likely. But it might help if the cause of the slowliness is an operation that you can uh, do in an asynchronous way. Like maybe you want to store uh, the list of the products you showed to the customer to avoid the showing them another time or stuff like that. So in that case, you're so storing some information and you don't need them for the present page load. And basically, it's something that you can postpone and do it in, a, in another time. Uh, that's the first example, so resource intensive operations. And the second example is uh, our inbound and outbound integration, like with an ERP system. Um, so let's see in more detail the first example. Um, if you have some resource intensive operation, like you are gathering some details from customers, for instance, um, you might need to write them on the database, but you can also avoid to do that straight away and queue the operation. So when you have a track fee spike, your database won't just max out and you will keep handling those requests over time because if you are gathering some, some details and you don't need to process them straight away, you can also store them on a side and then process them later. The other example were integrations. So you might, for instance, have uh, an ERP system and put a queue, a message queue between them, uh, between Magento and the ERP system. Uh, this will help them work more independently. So, for instance, if you do a mass product update on, on the ERP system, it won't choke Magento with too many requests, but they will just be stored in a queue and Magento will process them at, at its own pace. And same things if, for instance, uh, you are exporting orders from Magento to the ERP system, and maybe the ERP system is behind, uh, like it's in your warehouse, so it has a, an unstable connection. So you can like, handle that by implementing a client on the ERP system that go and gets um, and get the order without having like to handle that on the Magento side. So this is an abstract of how it works. In, in the middle, of course, we have a queue manager 
that can be uh, RabbitMQ. It could also be, as I mentioned, uh, Amazon SQS. On a side, we have a publisher that is that just a client that sends messages to the queues. And on the other side, we have the consumer that just is just there waiting for something to process. Uh, a couple of nodes, a queue manager can handle, of course, more than one queue. For instance, can be the products queue and the orders queue. And also, each queue can have more than one consumer. This means that, for instance, you could have two consumers processing your messages in parallel to have the time that it will take to process all the messages. Or you can also have two different consumers doing two different things on the same messages. But in that case, you will have to double the messages before the queue with a thing that is called the exchange. In Magento 2.1 Enterprise Edition, uh, all of that is already implemented. And it's made by those components. So first of all, there is a module called Framework Message Queue that implements all the base type and classes for uh, the processing of message queue. Then there is a module called message queue that just build on top of that the consumer comments, so some CLI tools to work on them, and also message locking, which you need if you have more than one consumer and you don't want two consumer running in parallel to process the same messages twice. And until here, there is no co constriction on what kind of backend you want you can have for the message queue. So it can be AMQP, but it can also be MySQL. And so there are a set of abstract classes which you can implement and provide an integration for your for another tool, like it might be SQS, for instance. Those two are already embedded in Magento Enterprise. Uh, MySQL is, of course, it's an easy one. You can use it on development. It's a lot easy, easier to configure. But so at this point, uh, if you want to try it out, you might, as I said, use MySQL without additional prerequisite. It will just store the message queue in the same database as, as your catalog, your orders, and so on. Or you can use RabbitMQ itself with AMQP as a backend. Uh, you can set up, in order to start working on it, uh, RabbitMQ locally, installing it and everything. Or you can do it the smart way with Docker Compose. Uh, at that link, there is already a Docker Compose file. You just need to run Docker Compose minus D up, and it will download the images for Magento. Uh, for, for the front-end servers, the database, uh, Redis, and also RabbitMQ. So, and it, it will connect them properly. Instructions are there, so if you want to give it a try, it's like you, get, you can get up and running in like 10 minutes. So when you start coding, the first thing you have to do is, of course, configure stuff. So uh, the connection to RabbitMQ is inside env.php like the database connection and like uh, the Redis connection if you're using it for the, the cache. Uh, other thing you have to do is implement the data structures. So you have to define what model your messages will, uh, will use. And they will be serialized and sent to the queue. And then deserialized after being picked out, for, picked out from the queue. So, it's very similar on how you work with, um, with the APIs. So you have an interface, and then you extend the interface with getter and setters, and you can work with that. After this, you have two files, communication.xml and q.xml, which you can, uh, there is a good reference on the dev docs. I don't want to get it too boring. You can define the queues there, and also the handlers and the models of the messages, all the part is there. And I think that I didn't find on the documentation, but I found that by myself was that you have to run 
set up upgrade each time you make a change to the queue configuration because the queues are configured on, on RabbitMQ itself only on a recurring scheme upgrade. So if you do a change and then you expect the, code, the, the queue to be there, it won't work unless you do a setup upgrade. At this point, this is the code itself, you can just include the publisher as a dependency and, and then from the class that need the publisher, you can just call it and use the publish method, which requires only the queue name, which you will have configured on queue.xml, and send the message data. On the other side, you will receive the same on uh, the same type and the same object on the consumer. Behind that, it's queued, serialized, queued, and deserialized, and you will find it here. So, and this class, of course, is the one you configured on queue.xml. At this point, you can test it out. So, who spot the error in this slide wins uh, a bit bull chocolate thing. <laughs> Okay, so you can verify the configuration by using queue consumers list. So you get the list of consumer, consumers and their names. Then when you want to start a consumer, you have to do queue consumer start and the name of the consumer. Not list again. That's the error. So I will get the chocolate. Um, okay, so at this point, you've implemented everything and you will want to see like, if, if everything works. Uh, apart, of course, testing the code, you have you can use the embedded CLI code, uh, the CLI tool that allows you to list the queues and see how many messages uh, you have in each queue, and also see the system status of RabbitMQ. You can also then, if you want something more uh, user friendly, you can set up RabbitMQ admin uh, that it has a web interface. It's an optional plugin that you can s just set up. And last but not least, when you're in production, you might want to um, monitor your, your queues uh, with a software as a service tool. So uh, Rambic MQ is well supported uh, by all tools that you might already use, for instance, Datadog or Dynatrace or uh, New Relic. So at this point, you might have asked yourself, like, I'm not an Enterprise Edition user, and what can I do? So uh, you can always, of course, implement a bespoke solution. There are, um, like, you, you can follow more or less the same pattern. And I mean, the, there's not a lot of work to do, but it's still something. So you might also try out a community extension. When I looked, there was nothing, so I had to implement something uh, for, for a project. And if you checked it out, you might find it useful. It's a lightweight, lightweight implementation, so it's not as complete as the enterprise one. And as well as like, a flexible backend. Um, OK, so that might be useful. And at this point, thank you for listening. That was, that was it. I hope you find it useful. Thank <laughs> you.